I just wanted to shoot this quick video of checking the preload on an S series transaxle. Now this is differential preload. It's slight it's different than the E153. E153 you actually measure the preload on the actual in, um, the output shaft and I believe even the input shaft I'd have to look back but those two that's where you measure it on the S series you actually have to get a ser special service tool and insert it down into the diff area so that the tool grabs that bar if you have a limited slip differential without the bar then I'm not exactly too sure how you'd have to do that I'm assuming it's just like the E153 Instead of measuring it from there, you measure it with the input and output shaft. But I have not been able to find a S54 is a gearbox, either um, the beams, either the G Limited or the SS3 Celica S54 beams red top that has the S54 with the limit slip differential. I don't think they have the bars, so there's somewhere there's a actual spec. A manual on how to install and uh, measure the preload on it. But, anyways, this is for non LSD S series. So, what you need is a special service tool. I was not about to go spend 150 bucks, 140, 150 is about what they wanted for the special service tool to install and grab that. And grab that differential there's a part number right there if you want to look it up if you want to buy it what I did I just grabbed a 18 millimeter socket hacked it up it took me a while to make but I hacked it up with the grinder and it fits snugly right into that like it was made for it and this is a 0 to 30 inch dial torque wrench I recommend the 0 to 30. I think there was only like one or two available on the market that I could find online. And you want to use a um, you want to use a 0 to 30 one. There they do have the 0 to 60 and 75 and whatnot. You can use those, but when you use those, the scale, the actual window from like say 0 to each each line is smaller. So it's we're we're dealing with very little specs. We're dealing with 6.9 to 13.9 inch pounds, so it better just get a 0 to 30, that way you can actually see it clearly as it's moving around. So basically what you're going to do is just insert the tool in there. Now what I did, oh okay, so this is with no input, no output shaft, the only thing that's in there is a differential. The actual guts is right there, it's waiting to go back in. So when you do this, you gotta take the gear, gearing out, put the case back on, torque each bolt 22 foot-pounds, then you put the bearing retainer cap with the shim underneath this, and torque these to 13 foot-pounds. Once you got that all torqued up, what I did is I spun the differential a couple times, you know, to kind of set, seat it and settle it down. Don't just, once you torque it, don't just take your reading. Make sure you spin it around a little bit. Okay, so now in order to do the preload, it's the moment, the number, the, the amount of torque. Make sure you zero this out. Okay, so the mo the moment the differential actually starts turning when you're applying pressure, that is your actually preload. So what you're going to want to do is, you know, you do this several times. Just kind of start putting pressure on it until it actually. Budges, boom, budge, it budged right there around, let's say about nine, let's try it again. That was a little less, let's go back. Okay, 
10, 10, 9, about 8, 9, 8, 8, 9, 8, 9, 9. Okay, well, I can keep doing doing this for an hour, but you can clearly see it's it's above the spec. It was 8, 9, 10 inch pounds. The minimum is 6.9, maximum is 13.9, so I'm right around the middle. I did it a couple times earlier and it was with constant 10, but... Oh, now it's 10. You do it that way. It's around there. It's good. So now after you check it and it's good, if it wasn't good, if it was too tight, or too loose, you would have to get you know, a different shim. There's a different the marks is a different size, and you'd want to go. You know, depends on what whether you need to go tighter or um, looser. You'd pick a different size. Now, the shims are supposed to be marked. I didn't see any marks on them, so if if they're not marked and you need to get a different shim, you're going to have to figure out what mark you have. Mark is the no actual part number you have. Say there's a six in here, it was, you know, you got to go tighter, looser. You know, you'd have to figure out what, what, what you're actually starting with. But right now we're good, so now we just got to remove the bearing cap, the retainer cap, the case, and reinstall everything. But this was just a quick kind of view of how to do the preload on the S this is an S53 from Celica. Now the reason why I'm doing a preload check I guess I should have put this in the beginning but the reason why is because this is a S54 actually S53 Celica front and gear set and I'm installing an MR2 S54 <clears throat> center case. And I'm installing that in order so I can, because the hole for the shifters on the opposite side compared to the Celica, the S53 Celica one doesn't have the, the hole for the shifter shaft for the MR2. Here's the, here's the Celica one. Doesn't have a hole. I mean, you can drill it. I had somebody drill my last one, but... I figured I'd do all OEM and just swap the cases just to get it done. So basically MR2 S54 center onto the Celica S53 front front half and S53 Celica gear set. So the only MR2 part I'm using is just the center case. Okay.